Hi everybody and welcome to Beetle Days Beatles channel. Today we are going to be getting very real about my collection of Beatles UK original reel to reels. Don't go away. So hi everybody and welcome to Beetle Days Beatles channel. I hope I find you all very well. So the main topic today will be my UK Beatles Reel to Reel collection which I have. You're going to really love it, it's absolutely fantastic. So anyway, before I get on to that, I just want to thank you all for all the subscriptions. We're over 300 now and all the fantastic comments because without you guys, there really isn't a channel. I can't stress that enough, so thank you very much. So moving on to I Call Your Name, and we're going to be saying hi to Sailor Sam, Joan Olivella, Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, and Chris McGovern. There's a big hi to you guys from Beetle Dave. Thanks for all your fantastic comments. So today, the main event, we're going to be looking at my collection of Beatles UK Reel to Reels. A splendid time is guaranteed for all. Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to start showing all of my reel to reels which I have from my collection. I'm just going to mention a little bit about the origin of reel to reels and who was responsible. And it was Max Grundig who launched his reel to reel machines in the early 50s. These were very expensive machines for the time. And surprisingly, it was the quarrymen that actually used a Grundig reel to reel machine for their rehearsals and their recordings. So it was EMI that actually was the first company to offer pre-recorded tapes um, in the 1950s, which actually did sell quite steadily. This actually moved up a gear when the 1960s come around with groups like Cliff and The Shadows, who have many of their recordings released on the reel-to-reel -reel format. So it wasn't until the 1960s, especially 1963 and onwards, that the tapes started to sell very well mainly because of the Beatles and all their albums being released on the reel-to-reel -reel format. So here we have then the 1963 version of Please Please Me on the left in the five inch box. A Little bit of a sticker mark on the front there, unfortunately, but this is really in fantastic shape, very clean, very white and in fantastic shape. And we have all the details on the back. A little bit of information to remember is that all the mono reels had a TA prefix before the actual catalogue number, which would have been the same as the LP counterpart. So let's take a look inside. So this one is quite a big spool. This is a five inch spool, which possibly is original. Maybe not. Also important to remember is all the mono reels had a white part one leader and the part two was red, whereas the stereo ones were yellow for part one and red for part two. Also has a little information booklet in there or just a sheet. Many of these got thrown away or discarded. So generally all the Beatles reels or most of the Beatles reels were released very soon or just after the UK LP counterparts. Okay, so the copy of Please Please Me on the right hand side here is in a jewel case. These were released in 1968 and these are a lot rarer to find than the cardboard type, much rarer. Still has the same catalog number, the prefix TA, has all the same information as on the box type one. But these, I say, are in the jewel case. Let's just take a look inside. This one's a four inch spool. And has all the same information on the white leader 
denoting it as a mono version. Okay, so moving on to with the Beatles. This is one is another one in absolutely superb condition. Very, very white, very, very clean. Amazing condition. Let's take a look inside. So this one has the four inch reel and the inset around the reel. This is one in beautiful condition. With the Beatles, part one, track one. Let's take a look at the 68 onwards dual case version of With the Beatles. This is another reel that's in super condition. Has the TA prefix being mono. What's interesting about this one is that it has Columbia at the top instead of Parlophone. Whether or not there is all like that, I don't know. Same information on this as the previous reel. Let's take a look inside. So in this one, you have a packing slip. If you had a faulty reel, these could get sent back with the packing slip and the problem of the reel or what was wrong with the reel could be known and you could send it back. So there we are. With the Beatles part one. Okay, so on to the Beatles third LP, which is A Hard Day's Night. A lot of people didn't realize that EMI actually duplicated these reels in real time, which actually meant a much better sound quality although they were more expensive than the actual vinyl counterparts. Okay, so let's take a look at the Hard Day's Night reel. This one's in superb condition throughout. Very clean. Incredibly clean. Let's take a look inside. So in here we have one of the leaflets. There's the four inch spool. Okay, let's take a look at the dual case version, which is virtually identical. spine packing slip in there moving on to Beatles for sale the Beatles fourth album the original cardboard box version of this LP in fantastic condition no corner damage, no splits, no wear, just perfect. Price written in pencil there on the top right. All the information, exactly what you would find on your vinyl counterpart. Let's take a look inside. So moving on to the Help LP, or in this case, Reel to Reel. There's the original 1965 cardboard one. I actually bought the Please Please Me with the Beatles, A Hard Day's Night, Beatles for Sale, and this one from the same guy who kept them basically in a drawer for many, many years, which is why they're all in fantastic shape. And there's the price on that one there. So let's take a look inside. There's the packing slip inside there. And there we have its white leader. Okay, so moving on to the dual case version of Help. All the information is exactly the same. 
front and back, catalogue number, exactly the same, and on the spine. Let's take a look at the reel. Same information on the leader tape. So moving on to the fabulous Rubber Soul LP here. Bit of a mispress going on here. Normally you'd have a little slot cut there and a slot cut at the top where you would pull the box off the bottom lid. But in this instance, they put them on the wrong place. Anyway, this reel was in fantastic condition. Same track listing as the LP and everything else the same. So let's have a little look at the reel of this one. Okay, there's the white leader. Also with this copy, we have our packing slip, our little parlophone sticker, and our EMI tape leaflet. So let's move on to the Rubber Soul dual case version. This is actually the stereo version. And all stereo reels had the TD prefix and then the catalogue number straight after. You'll notice that the running order is also different. That will be the same as the cassette and the 8-track version as well. And this was released, bottom right, September 1970. So let's take a look at the reel. This one is back to front. This is actually ready to be played as part two. As it's got the red leader. Rubber sole continued, side two. There we are. And it would normally be part one, a yellow leader. So moving on to the classic Revolver LP. What's interesting to note about the reels also is that no EQ or compression were ever added to these recordings. They were absolutely pure, unlike the vinyl counterparts, which had EQ and compression added when they were being cut. So just one little thing there to remember. So let's look at the original mono tape box. Slightly off centre there. It's obviously slightly off to the left hand side. And let's take a look at the back. All these tracks running in the same order as the LP. And there's our spine. Let's take a look inside. So... There's our little parlophone sticky. And here we have Revolver Part 1 or Track 1. So on to the dual case version of Revolver. Absolutely identical in every way except of the dual case. So moving on to a collection of Beatles oldies but goldies. There's the original cardboard box version. Probably not in the best condition this one, but not too bad. A little bit yellow, a little bit off-white. Hard to get a decent one of this one, it seems. And there's the reel. Four-inch spool. There's no packing slip in there. And there's the... There's the leader, a little bit faded that one. Onto the dual case version. This one's in much better condition. Exactly the same information once again. Let's take a look inside. Tape. 
Okay, so moving on to Sergeant Pepper. Here's the original cardboard box reel in fantastic shape. Really is glorious. Glorious mono. Exactly the same running order as the LP. Let's take a look at that reel. There's a little Parlophone sticker on there. And there we have it. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Track one. So secondly, we have the original mono jewel case version. All the same information as before. And on the spine. And I'll open that. And we have the reel and the polyphone sticker where it should be doing its job with the leader. Okay, so moving on to my third and final reel. This one is the stereo one. Very vibrant picture compared to the other ones. Anyway, there's the spine with the TD prefix again. And exactly the same running order as the previous two. Let's take a look inside. And there we have, as it should be, the yellow leader for stereo tapes. Probably be a good time to mention actually that the sound and quality of these reels are incredibly good. They're very pure, um, they don't have much top end but they have a very warm and good mid range. But at least they haven't got added EQ or compression like I mentioned before. Let's move on to the White Album. So here we have the mighty White Album. When this one was released, it would have been the first one released with the new EMI jewel cases for the reel to reels. None of the reel to reel releases would have been numbered. So this is the mono version here, has the DTA catalogue number before the PMC, which is double tape meaning. There's two misspelling titles on this reel. You have Piggyist, which should be Piggies, and Rocky Raccoon has one C, which is a misspelling. So let's have a look inside. There's our packing slip. And we have our five inch mono reel. Now quoting Apple. On to the stereo version. Once again, it's not numbered. And this one has the DTD prefix before the catalog number. And it also has the misspelling Piggyist and Rocky Raccoon with one C. All the tracks exactly in the same order as the vinyl counterpart. Let's take a look at the reel. There's our packing slip. And our stereo reel. This one will be on part two, as it has the red leader. There we go. So on to the penultimate Beatles reel-to-reel -reel release in the UK. This one is the ultra rare mono edition. So that's the TAPMC 7088. And this one was released, according to bottom right, in September 1970, a full year after the album version. So let's take a look at the uh, reel. Uh, 
So this is basically a fold down of the stereo version. This is not an exclusive mono version, but still ultra rare nevertheless. So over to the stereo version we have here. So this one has the TD prefix before the catalog number. And this would have been released around the time of the actual vinyl album. All the track listing exactly the same as the LP. So let's take a look at the reel. So this one's on a bigger spool, a five inch spool with the yellow leader making it a stereo reel. Notice that this one and the previous mono one didn't have Apple on it actually, interestingly. So moving on to the final Beatles LP that was ever released on Reel to Reel in the UK. Obviously this is Let It Be. Um, this is the UK mono edition, which is incredibly rare. There we are, the catalogue number TAPMC7096. This one was released in August of 1970, just uh, three months after the original LP. And the track listing is slightly different there. Two of us, I, me, mine, one after 909, cross the universe, dig it, let it be, side one. We have Maggie May, dig a pony, the long and winding road, I got, I got a feeling there, it should be I've got a feeling, for you blue and get back on side two. Interesting. Let's take a look at the reel. Got packing slip underneath, 1970, let it be part one. No Apple this time, just Parlophone again. Now moving over to the stereo version. TD PCS 7096. And that was also released in August of that year, just a few months after the original LP version. And once again, we have the tracks exactly in the same order. And I got a feeling, should be I've got a feeling, on the track listing. Let's take a look at the reel. And we'll see this being a stereo reel. That's a yellow part one leader. No Apple logo or information there, just Parlophone. So I hope you enjoyed my Beatles reel to reel collection today. They're certainly much more sought after and rarer as the years go by. So anyway, if you like my video, don't forget to give us a like. Why not subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any more future videos. So the next video will be the 20th anniversary picture disc collection. So hopefully you can join me for that. This is Beatle Dave signing off.